it's below an 80, then, you know, you can't get so many scores below an 80 before you're kicked out. Typical PA school, they just start you right off with an exam. Hey, guys, I'm Boris. I'm a physician assistant. This is... I'm Elijah. I'm a first year student over at Rutgers. First year PA student. Yeah, well, I started this week, but I had my orientation last week. Oh, so orientation's done. Yeah, orientation's done. I already had my... Today was my second day of class now. Really? Yeah. Oh, man. How's that going? Uh, it went well. Uh, we had an exam the first day of class. And Typical PA school. They just start you right off with an exam. Yeah, it was it was med term. Um, and a lot of this, uh, my second years were saying like it was it was going to be easy, but it was actually a lot harder than I expected. So I made sure to study just in case, like to study extra hard. Nice. Um, and I got the grade I wanted. I got like a 92 percent. Well, that's spooky. I got a 92 on my first exam, too. That was also medical terminology. I'm still kind of caught up in what I got wrong. I, I really want to know. You sound like such a PA student. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, I, ha I have to know it for the future. I don't want to use the wrong terminology on, like, one thing that I missed. It's definitely true. Um, I'm just going to say Elijah already sounds like a PA student because he's freaking out over, like, the little things that he got wrong and not going, like, all right, I got a 92. Next. Let's move on to the next exam. He's just like, no, no, I, I need to know. I studied so hard. I have to know what I got wrong. What's wrong with me? And like, <laughs> and everybody in my program was the same way. So like you'd go outside, little known secret of PA school. As soon as you're done with your exam, you leave the room. And then everyone mm -hmm. like congregates in this little circle outside the room, like whispering because you're not supposed to talk. And everyone's right. whispering like, oh, what'd you get for number one? What'd you get for number two? And like sooner or later, we all figure it out because like photographic memories all around. Everyone's like figured out exactly what they got wrong. Right. And then you go like, oh, shit, really? That's what that was? <laughs> Yeah, like me, me and my classmates did the same thing, but after our exam, we took it and then yeah. we all kind of got into a circle and they were like, oh, I put this for this. And I'm like, oh, did I put that? <laughs> yeah, right. Like, oh, I hope I put that. Shoot. Uh, I think they were really lenient on the grading, too, because there's like multiple okay. answers for certain like prefixes, suffixes and like combining forms. So I haven't looked at my actual exam yet. I don't know if they'll show us, but I, I think they graded pretty leniently but the content was a, a little tough like there were words that were definitely not used mm -hmm. uh when i was in the field when i was still working getting my pce sure what was i gonna say oh yeah about like everyone figuring out what they got wrong and right it's like you mm -hmm. almost know your score before you even get your score mm -hmm. and so of course you're freaking out like trying to figure out what my score is because like if it's below a 90 or an 80 it's an 80. Yeah. It's below an 80, then, you know, you can't get so many scores below an 80 before you're kicked out. Right. So it's like everyone kind of freaks out. It's important. But it's just yeah, I think it's like the same attitude. I think our cutoff was like 70. And if you got below 70, you'd have to retake it. But I think the class average was around like, yeah, like 80, 82. So I think most everyone passed. Yeah. It's just funny how like, I don't know. I mean, I finished PA school two years ago at this point. Mm -hmm. And it's just funny how it's like, the exact same thing that Elijah's going through. Right. Same kind of type A people, same exact, like, first day of class is a test. It's like, mm -hmm. I don't know, it's just like Groundhog's Day in PA school. It's like, uh, it's like um, almost like college, but like uh -huh. everyone, like literally everyone is like almost the exact same way with regards to like grades. It's like college, but with only the top, like two students. Right. Like, Everyone's a top, like, like the top of their class. Yeah, everybody you're with has been at the top of their class their whole life. And that, that was crazy for me because even at UCLA, everyone was the top of their high school classes. Uh -huh. And now, like, PA school is, like, everyone's the top of the top. Like, yeah. everyone's just super smart. Yeah, literally. And then there's guys like me and Elijah that just took a little longer. <laughs> hey, like, but I'm, I'm still competing. I'm still there. I'm yeah, right. yeah. We're. I mean, I made it through, like, it's totally possible, but it's just like, we're not those people that were like 4.0 right. students, like all the way from like first grade on, which is like most of your classmates, you know, especially the young mm -hmm. ones, like they've, right. been, they've had their like study routine, like ingrained in their brain since they were like two, they were just like ready to go. Oh yeah. Me and Elijah are like, shit, we're just trying to figure this out now, like in our late twenties and thirties. Mm -hmm. But it's like, I don't know. I mean, we're still here and we made it. It sucks. It took a little long, but <laughs> It is what it is. It sucks and it doesn't suck. You know, it's like when you get out and you're a little older, 
you don't experience that whole thing where like the patients don't really respect you because you're like this young kid. Right. You're obviously an adult. So they like, they open up to you more. They like want to tell you more. You don't have that pressure that like a younger PA would have. Right. So it's good. Yeah. I think, I don't know if I feel that a lot. I, I feel like I'm around the age of, of my classmates. Like everyone's like around like 25, 26 and I'm 27. So I'm barely there, but I have that extra thing where it's like, I have a kid and, yeah. Like a lot of classmates are like, what? He has a kid. <laughs> he has a kid. Oh my God. Wait, so your your PA school class is mostly like 25, 26? Yeah, I think our youngest is like around 21, 22, and our, our mm -hmm. oldest people, I, I'm not too sure. I'm I'm really bad with age. I want to assume like mid 30s or late really? 30s. Yeah. That's so interesting because we had a lot of like little teeny boppers. Oh no, yeah. We had a lot of um people like around my age. Yeah, that's how it should be. I mean, like the average age of a PA student is like 27. And then I got there oh. and everyone's like 22. And it's like, what the hell? Where are these <laughs> kids coming from? What is happening? You're like the only bald guy there. <laughs> was I the only bald guy? I think I was. I definitely wasn't the only old guy, but I was definitely the only bald guy. <laughs> I don't think I have a bald guy in my class. You should change that. <laughs> no, I like my hair, man. No, um, I know that... I'm already going to be bald when I'm older, so. Are you sure? Yeah, yeah, my grand, my maternal grandfather uh, is bald. <laughs> okay, gotcha. It's not the worst <laughs> thing in the world. But yeah, you, you definitely should just hold on to it. It's your best feature right now. <laughs> when it starts thinning out, I'll think about it. But I'm yep. holding on. I'm holding on to it. <laughs> you should. I don't know. I've saved so much money on haircuts in the last like ten years. Oh man, don't get me started. I'm like. It's hard transitioning from being like a full time worker. Like I, not only did I work full time, I worked overtime. So I was like bringing in a lot of money for my job, and to go back to being like a student, like I don't even think I can afford a haircut anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is free, buddy. It, it is. I, I would just have to buy the clippers. I'll send them to you. I'll buy them for you. <laughs> uh, I think I'm too broke to even afford clippers. <laughs> that's true. Hey, look, if you want to join the brotherhood, I'll be happy to just send you some clippers. <laughs> Like, yes, we got another one. Uh, okay, anyway, I think the thing that we're going to call this video is uh, PA school orientation for two okay. reasons. One, Elijah just went through orientation. So those people that want to get into PA school, it's like living vicariously, right? It's right. like, I want to get my uh, my acceptance letter. I want to be in orientation, like knowing I'm going to be a PA. So like, mm -hmm. they just want to know what that feels like. And two, for people that have orientation coming up, they might be like, all right, well, what should I expect, right? Okay. So, Elijah, how's orientation for PA school been? Oh, man. Well, I, I guess I'll start off with touching down in New Jersey, right? Because a lot of you are going to be, like, out-of-state applicants. Mm -hmm. Some of you may be in-state, and, and that's awesome. Like, you're already familiar with the area. But in my case, like, I, I touched down in New Jersey, and I'm originally from SoCal. Uh, I went from SoCal to Arizona to now New Jersey. And for me, I, I was more excited than scared. My whole family was more excited than scared. Um because it was a new experience, a new state. The weather is nicer than in Arizona. Um, so yeah, like we got the whole experience of uh, seeing a new state and just going on campus for the first time. It it almost felt like I was a new student in undergrad again. Like when I walked onto UCLA's campus, I was like, whoa, like what's all this? Like these buildings. And I I'm still getting that same surreal feeling now uh, with the new campus. At Rutgers. Yeah, over at Rutgers. Yeah, it, it's beautiful over here. It's the Garden State, so so green. Yep. Yeah, because Rutgers is a pretty prestigious school. Uh, yeah, I think I think the rankings just came out this past year. We were originally like in the twenties. Not that I care about rankings, because I personally don't think it doesn't matter. It matters. I think what matters is like the faculty and the staff and how the program runs itself. But yeah, uh, we, we kind of jumped up there. We went from like the mid twenties to like number seven. Hmm. As in like PA schools go? Yeah, like in rankings. There's like a ranking. If you just look at uh look up PA school rankings on Google, you should be able to find it. I'm actually kind of curious about that. Could we look at that? Yeah, yeah. How do I share my I think Duke should be number one still. They've been number one for a while now. Yeah, since uh 1965 or 67 or whatever. Because they're the first program. Duke's always been number one. Oh yeah. <laughs> I think even their med program too. It's pretty solid. Yeah, Duke's a really good school. Are we talking about this one? 
Yeah, yeah. There, there's two of them, but that's the one I look at. Oh, crap. It's trying to tell me to turn off my ad blocker. No way. <laughs> All right, there we go. Um, Duke, Baylor, I've heard <laughs> of. Iowa, for some reason. Okay. And there's, oh, you guys are like oh, under seven. There we are. That's pretty sick. So you're going to like a top tier PA school. Yeah, and I, I was even more surprised when, not even when I interviewed, because even then they were like in the mid 20s. And I was like, wow, this is actually like a good school that wants to hear my story. Yeah. Dude, that's awesome. Congratulations. Thank you. So there was like a little bit of like, I was like proud. I was like, oh my goodness, top like seven. And I like posted it on Facebook. I shared it with my family. Uh huh. Uh, because a lot of them know my story, know that I, you know, a lot of my friends too know that I had a kid really young. So for them to see me like succeed now, like, even though I'm well, like later in my life, kid, mm -hmm. uh, they, they were all just very proud. And I, I felt it. I felt the love from them. Yeah, that's awesome. I'm really happy for you. Thanks, man. I also want to know where the heck my school ranks because I haven't seen it yet. What school did you go to again? I, I feel like Lemoyne, I've never asked. College in New York. Lemoyne, it's spelled M O I S E. Uh, Lemoyne, so like L E space M O Y N. There it is. Number oh, there it is. 42. New York. Oh, that's oh, Syracuse. Okay, that's far north for me. Okay. Wait a minute. Hold up. Are like the bottom 100 all number 142? Because there's a lot of ties here. Yeah, there's a lot of ties. Some schools <laughs> will tie. And I don't know how they gauge this at all. I don't get that either, but it's like, look, we're tied for number 142 with like... With like 10, 15 different schools. How many, like, yeah, a bunch of schools. Look at this. I think it's more than 10 or 15. Like, they're all 142. Nope, no, we I'm not even too sure who who's in charge of these rankings. Like, I know it's based on like, like various factors, like faculty, staff, how the programs ran. And like, I think like reviews from students or like past students... Hmm. Interesting. So Elijah's going to the number seven school, and I graduated from a school that's tied for number one forty-two. And we got both got ninety-two percent on our midterm exam, so it was like the Absolutely. same exact thing. <laughs> <laughs> so um, it does not matter what school you go to; you can go to number one, you can go to number yeah, nobody knows. This. You know, yeah, like it's like your patients aren't going to be like, "Oh, what PA school was your like school ranked?" It's like they don't even know what a PA is; they just think you're the doctor. And oh, so, what was your GPA in case school? <laughs> what's that? Oh, what, what was, was your GPA in case school? Three point eight. Oh, really? Yeah. Everybody has. Everybody gets a good GPA because it's like first off, it has to be above three point oh, and second, right. everyone's like a straight A student, so it's just like it's impossible not to. Um, each school's score reflects its average rating on, from marginal to outstanding, based on a survey of academics at peer institutions. All right. We can get into this another time. <laughs> That'll be another, yeah. yeah, there's like a lot of a hey, look, I'm not turning off my my ad blocker. It's not happening. But yeah, so there's a bunch of things that they rank you on. Anyway. Yeah, I know, so. Huh? I, I didn't even know this like extra stuff was here. Yeah. Interesting. All right. Well, maybe my school can get it together and get a little higher on the list <laughs> next year. <laughs> But I, I'm just gonna reiterate: no matter what school you apply to, don't even look at the ranking. If you get no, an don't answer, do it. You're gonna, be, you're gonna be a PA in two years. So yes, as long as you're in an accredited program, don't worry about it. Like, don't even think twice about the rankings. Just get into a school. Mm -hmm. Yeah, hundred percent. So anyway, how was orientation? Oh man, um, magical man. <laughs> magical policies, all that. <laughs> policies. Oh, that sounds exciting. Um. So my first two days of orientation uh, went well. Uh, we mainly went over like policies. Um, we had some tours, we toured the school and we didn't really go far. My whole program was really just located on one floor. <laughs> one floor, one lecture hall for the, my next three years. And so yeah. so that, that's that. Um, meeting all my classmates, we all looked a little nervous at first. Everyone's like, that's so nice, business casual. Um, but my program did it really well. They like threw in an icebreaker, like right at the beginning with introductions. Nice. So we all just kind of introduced ourselves and it, it was really fun getting to hear about everyone's like stories. Like, cause they ask you things like, what did you do before? 
uh, you applied? Uh, like, where did you graduate? Um, where where did you get your PCE? What did you do work wise? Mm -hmm. Things like that, and there there was a variety of backgrounds, and I I know that that's what Rutgers does really well is have people with very diverse backgrounds, and I think half of our class were like out of staters like me, so I, I was glad to know that I wasn't alone there. Cool. So what was the icebreaker? What was the question? Um, so yeah, basically just tell us a little bit about yourselves, um, what you did before PA school, uh, where you graduated from, uh, and tell us a funny thing about yourself or an interesting thing that you want everyone to know about. And the cool thing is that we didn't introduce it ourselves. We have to get to know someone to introduce it for us. I like that one. That's a good one. Yeah. So it, it was pretty nice because it, it got everyone laughing and then. There's obviously some people reading and like making like funny snarky comments. That was really fun, Uh huh. really lighthearted. It really opened up everyone. That's a fun one. When it, like you get paired off with some random person and you have to ask them all the questions and then you like present them and they present you. Exactly. Yeah, that's solid. What was your funny thing about yourself? Uh, I don't know if I said a funny thing. I think the thing I said was that I'm a little shy at first. Mm -hmm. uh, but like my silly side will come out and some of my classmates have already seen it. Like we're, we're already laughing, um, making jokes, cracking jokes at each other, you know, all like complaining about how hard case schools are ready, even though we're like two days in. <laughs> <laughs> we already have a test. Oh yeah. The test trusts everyone out, man. Yep. What else do you guys do? You get fitted for so, your white coats? We did. Uh, some people opted to order it online because I think they kind of knew what size they were already, but I, I kind of wanted to try it just in case. So mm -hmm. I already had my long white coat for anatomy lab and we got fitted for a short white coat. So that's going to have our school and our name engraved on it. Oh, that's cool. I don't think ours did. Oh, is that not common? I don't know. I've definitely seen some schools do it. I don't think mine did. Oh, you yeah. Okay. Huh? You, you might have one. You just haven't busted it out of the closet yet. I'm just trying to think. No, I'm pretty sure the one they gave us for school was just plain white. Like it might have had like Lemoyne on it, like the patch, but it didn't have our name. And then oh. when you graduate, they give you the one with your name and like PAC and stuff. Oh, so you do eventually get one. Yeah, eventually. But like there's no name and, and whatnot on your first one. Not cool enough. I think I think they require us to have a name on it because we, we do a pro bono clinic here. It's called the Hope Clinic. Mm -hmm. Um. So, oh, sorry. Uh, forgive me. It's not pro bono. We, we, um, deliver healthcare to those in underserved communities. Mm -hmm. So those who are like uninsured, um, you know, like it, it's a town literally like 20 minutes away. Uh, it's a population that really needs medical practitioners. And we go there as students, as first year students, third year students, and uh, we have some faculty working there as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so we need that name tag there so we can be easily identifiable. <laughs> sure. That's cool. That's really good that you guys do that. Yeah, it, it was really cool. It's one of the reasons I really was proud of being accepted to this program because I really wanted to do something like that. At least experienced it during PA school. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think there's another, there's a pre-PA student that I work with that has like the same kind of thing happening. Mm -hmm. Like his mom and a lot of his family get uh, get medical care at this like underprivileged clinic. And then a school that he's applying to like runs that clinic basically. Mm -hmm. It was a little bit deja vu. I was like, was I talking to Elijah about that or somebody else? It was actually somebody else. It was someone else. Yeah. yeah. So it sounds like a lot of PA schools are kind of partnered with a clinic like that where they get to provide care to under, uh, underprivileged folks, which is wonderful. Right. Absolutely. So what else do you guys do? Introductions, white coats? Introductions, white coats. I got my medical equipment that I dropped too much money on. Yep. Uh, I wish I talked to some <laughs> of the upperclassmen a little earlier. Yeah. Uh, because they they're getting rid of theirs and <laughs> I paid a lot. I paid a lot for it. <laughs> what did you get? Like the autoscope and a phalmoscope and stuff? Yep, oh, the diagnostic set. Yep, the autoscope. Um yeah. my stethoscope I got gifted from a friend, so thank goodness I got that. Um thermometer. And I already had one at home, but I, I just bought it just because I wanted to be uniform with the rest of the set. Right. Um I got this cool little jacket actually too, uh, with my name on it. I'm going to bust it out of my closet. Yep. So I picked up this jacket. Um, our school offered it to us uh, via an apparel sale online before we started the program. Nice. So it has my, 
my school logo on it, and then oh, it has my cool. money. And it's like one of my favorite brands. It's Patagonia. So yep. I really like that too. I feel like every PA at the hospital has a Patagonia hoodie or like jacket like that or like a vest. That's probably why I like it. It's probably subconscious. <laughs> I think so. Because like every PA I see at the hospital has one of them. Mm -hmm. Like outpatient, it's totally different. But in the hospital, everybody's got a Patagonia. Yeah. And, and it, it's really nice because it gets really cold in the hospital. So yep. I can't wait to rock it. Wait, it's still a little hot out. So I haven't busted it out yet, but huh. I've been wearing it like here in my house because oh, <laughs> it feels so funny. official. Dude, that is so cool. I really love that. Uh, the Rutgers logo and it's got your name on it. Oh yeah. And it's like big <laughs> for official physician assistant. Love it. Cool, man. So they got you all geared up. I'm okay. just going to keep it on for now too. Cause I'm, I'm kind of, Cool, like, really, yeah solid cool well what else is going on in orientation was that it um what else did we do so we did tours like i said we just stayed on one floor in our lecture hall mm -hmm. that was the first day yeah so we can cut that there uh that was just my first day of uh orientation and i, I was super excited for even day two um but day two was kind of a little bit of like oh god i don't want to say the boring stuff but like like, you know, just the things they have to go over, like yep. like sexual harassment, uh, school policies, you know, all that fun stuff. They went over basically the overview overview of our program, uh, just went over everything. They went over what our roles were in the Hope Clinic, uh, that we would be there as first years and third years. Um, and we, we got to do another fun thing. We got to practice vitals on each other. So that, that was pretty cool. Cool. Yeah, because um, apparently we're going to get tested on it tomorrow oh god eh, i i've worked long enough i know how to take a manual BP. How to take vitals. <laughs> yeah i left all my stuff in my locker in school and it's like a 20 minute walk from here so oh you're I walking to practice. school yes so i do walk to school yeah man they were testing you on vitals i'm trying to remember if that's how we did it because we definitely started with a medical terminology exam mm -hmm. i think vitals might have been first and like the uh what do you call it not the anatomy lab but the other lab um the micro, micro but no 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 not micro, oh, no it's like the lab where you learn all your like physical exam physical diagnosis oh. oh it oh gosh i know what you're talking about i think that's during my second semester or second year i, I forgot when um, it should be now it's like whenever you learn all your physical exams oh no that i think that i think that's what our second semester for us oh interesting yeah huh I'd be curious to look at your um uh, your syllabus, but like how your program's organized. Because mm -hmm. ours, like ours being a 24-month program, everything was basically the same, like every semester. Mm -hmm. like we'd have physical diagnosis, we'd have clinical medicine, we'd have pharmacology, and there would be like maybe one or two classes that were slightly different, but everything was basically the same, like the whole time. You you know what might be different between our programs? What was yours two years? Yeah, 24 months. Okay. So mine is almost three years. It's like two and nine months. So yeah. that's probably where it differs. So I believe it's a little bit of a slower pace. Mm -hmm. um, so for I, I, I'll be uh, transparent with my first semester. So I right now I'm taking anatomy, uh, microbio, biochem, uh, intro to scientific inquiry, which is like a research class. Mm -hmm. um, ooh, and there was one more. I haven't gone to that class yet. I don't remember it right now. But. If I remember it later, I'll, I'll mention it. So yeah. I think I'm taking like five classes. That sounds about right. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty standard. Yeah. And then research is always part of it. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I feel like that's something a lot of people don't know is that like you have to do a research project in PA school. Mm -hmm. And so like, I don't know how your program does it. Ours, it was basically like a, like a one credit class we have every single semester. And there's mm -hmm. like a standard, I don't know, like standard way that you like go through it. And basically you check all the boxes and you get your, you know, your research project. Mm -hmm. uh, but because it's a master's, I think some law states that it has to be a research project as well. I think they, ha they haven't, they've introduced it to us, the master's yeah. project. They told us like it was a thing, mm -hmm. but they haven't really, I, I don't have a class that actually is geared towards it. Besides that research class, I think they're trying to teach us how to do research first and yeah. like write a few like papers first before we actually delve into um that project at the end of it you're right it could have been like just second year i can't remember i really can't remember anymore it's such a blur 
And you know, I'm getting so overwhelmed with so much info, not just from classes, but like mm -hmm. orientation that I, everything's like a blur to me. Like I wasn't able to retain everything. So it's, I'm just taking it day by day right now. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to just kind of be like that, isn't it? <laughs> it has to be. All right. So if you had to give one thing you wish you would have known before making the move and starting orientation, like you already kind of like gave us the thing about the medical supplies because your program is going to give you like a list of medical supplies and it's like a thousand bucks for everything, but you yeah. only end up using like a few things. Mm -hmm. So Elijah's first piece of advice would be like, don't get the expensive stuff that you don't actually need. Mm -hmm. Right. Yep. Try to reach out, try to like, if you're on, in those Facebook groups, like just say it out loud, like, Hey, I'm going to this program. Are there any upperclassmen that are in this group that mm -hmm. are selling their, their set? Um, because upperclassmen for me didn't start selling it until they actually graduated. And that was like right before the program started. So it would have been nice to know. I would have saved like 500 bucks or something. Yeah. So that's one option is like you could buy, uh, buy it used mm -hmm. or you could take the cheap route like I did and just not even buy it <laughs> because like the lab has auto scopes and ophthalmoscopes and that thing is like 600 bucks or 700 bucks. Mm -hmm. And it's like, they already have it. If you want to practice, just go to the lab. Like I didn't have any reason to buy my own. And I still don't have my own. Like, I don't know why you would. But like, I don't know. Does your program, does your lab have those for you? Or do you have to have your own? We do have a simulation lab. And I'm not sure if it's provided. We were told to buy it. I haven't gone that far yet. And Got it. I haven't really talked to too much of my upperclassmen about it yet. Okay. I think they do use it, though. That makes sense in that case. Yeah. Yeah. Because for us, it was like the standard shopping list, the same as for you, but our lab had them and the lab is always available to us. Oh, so, that's that's really nice. Yeah, it is. But like they still told us to buy them. And then all the upperclassmen told me, like, why would you possibly buy it? You don't need it. Mm -hmm. So that's just like save money. Uh, then like the school will have you order like your stethoscope and everything like through them, which is more expensive. So mm -hmm. if you just get everything on Amazon, it'll be cheaper. I don't know. Just trying to save a few dollars for like. I got lucky. I my students. friend, my friend got it for me. He, it was like his congratulatory gift for me for PA oh, school. Nice. Yeah, so it, that was nice. I didn't have to spend like what one one sixty or one fifty on it or something. On what the stethoscope? Yeah. Oh, no, what did you get? Uh, the cardiology four. Nice. Yeah, he he offered the echo, and I'm like, dude, no, like I'm just a student. Yeah. <laughs> like. Don't get Amy anything that's over like three hundred dollars. That's that's way too much. Don't buy Elijah anything over three hundred dollars. Yeah, I, I have to learn how to be poor. You can't spoil me with good things <laughs> while, while I'm poor. I actually, I think I've heard of the Echo. I think that just came out. Yeah, so um, I think it's like wireless, or it's an attachment. So it's a completely yeah. different stethoscope. It's an attachment, and I think you can listen to it through like earphones, and mm -hmm. it's supposed to be like. Oh, I thought I thought they call it. Ended. Um, so it's supposed to be like the best stethoscope there is out there, especially if you're in something like cardiology, you know, the pulmonology. So you can really hear those. Um, so you can really auscultate for those lung sounds and hear those. Um, hear the heart. Oh, it's echo core. That's the one. Oh my god, it's four thirty. <laughs> it's four thirty for this part, and then it's like three thirty for this one. Uh, digital stethoscope, core digital stethoscope. I don't know the difference here. Oh, this, yeah, I never really looked into. I didn't know there was two different ones. I, I think those are two completely different ones, just with different attachments. And then there's like a an attachment that's two hundred bucks. And I think you can connect connect it to your phone via Wi Fi. Oh wow! Yeah, because you can record. You can actually record what you hear, and then like, for example, if you're consulting with a physician or a coworker, you can let them hear it too instead of them having to go on the room. Oh, that's cool. I like that. Oh, you're going to get one now, huh? Well, no, I don't want it. I, I'm, I'm trying <laughs> to my cardiology master that I've had forever. Uh, but no, that's cool that you can record that and like send it to a cardiologist and be like, is this what I'm hearing? Mm -hmm. You know, that's pretty sweet. Uh, if you're in like some super specialized field, I could see that being important. Or if you have very bad hearing. <laughs> that too. Yeah. Um, I, I would just recommend the classic three or the cardiology four for any pre-PA students the classic three is perfect like there's so many different colors and you can get it engraved get your name on it yep uh Lippmann classic three 
Yeah, that's the one that I used in PA school and like the two uh two stethoscope giveaways I had. I always mm -hmm. gave this one away. But yeah, yeah like, right. It, it comes in so many colors. Look at this. Like you can get that, so many different things. That neon green. Right? Like that's the kind of like the one I had, the last one you were on. This one? Uh the lot before that. Kind of like that, but the cardiology four version. Got it. Like it shouldn't matter mm -hmm. what color it is, but it kind of matters. It's like this one's mine. If you leave it, like it's definitely mine. And it's just like it makes you happy that you picked it out. Mm -hmm. But that's the thing. There's so many people that will get the same one as you. And you're just like, what the heck? There's like 50 colors online. Yeah. So on. I, I would see? recommend it like an engraving or something. I, I engrave yeah. every single like item that I have, like from my Apple pencil to my stethoscope. Like I, I've engraved everything just just in case, you know, never know. How are you going to take notes? Are you going to do the like iPad thing with the notepad? So things are a little different now for my undergrad and my master's before starting pay school, I, I had a PC for like eight years and that thing was beautiful. Like mm -hmm. if any of you like ever get into the PC realm, like PC is awesome. Like you can have two screens, you can have three screens. The thing's awesome. Like you can drag different windows to different screens. That's what I used. Um, but since I had to fly here, there's no way I could bring something that bulky with all the other important things we have to bring here. So I opted to just get an iPad because it was required for my program. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I think my program just started recently doing that, just having it be required, uh, the iPad, because it used to be covered in our tuition, but now it's it's more uh, like, like you get to have more of a say in which iPad you can get versus just getting whatever the program throws at you. Yeah, and then you can get it used so you can save money. Exactly, yeah. I think a lot of people in my class did that. Like they pulled up the uh, the PowerPoint slides and then they were able to like scribble all over them and draw all over them. Oh, yep. That's exactly what I'm using. And I just learned how to use it yesterday. It took me like an hour. <laughs> an, an hour during my lecture. So I was learning how to use the thing while while in my lecture. And I, I don't recommend that. I recommend know how, to, know how to use your apps before you start your first day. Because it's yep. important. Um, but yeah, uh, I, it's called Notability. So that's yeah. something that I and a lot of my classmates use. Um, people use OneNote. I use Notability. I like it a lot. I did pay for the membership. I think it's completely worth it. Um, so basically the membership just allows you to have full access to the app and you can, you know, use it unlimitedly, if that's a word. You have unlimited use of it. That's actually a good point because like, how are you going to take notes in PA school? Because everything goes so mm -hmm. fast. You can't really take detailed notes. You can mm -hmm. try. It's not going to work. So, like, you just have to kind of find your rhythm and figure out exactly how you learn. In, like, the first few weeks, just try everything out. If you happen to get a bad mm -hmm. grade because, like, your strategy doesn't work, this is the time to do it is, like, in the beginning. And then try mm -hmm. something different. And then, like, when something works, stick to it. Just, like, mm -hmm. stick to that one method, you know? Yeah, so like know your study methods. Mm -hmm. Even though people say you're going to study differently in peace, well, there, there's some things you're that are going to overlap with how you studied in undergrad or in your post mm -hmm. Um, For me, the iPad was a completely new thing. I'm a laptop guy. I'm a PC guy. That's all I had. That that And I had to learn something new, and I don't recommend learning it on your first day of PA school. Because I was struggling. I was figuring out Notability, OneNote, Anki, Quizlet. Even last you, night, you, I was – what was that? Are you going to use Anki? So that's the thing like I was researching it last night like and that took me another hour right I could have been studying for my anatomy class but I was looking up oh how do you use Anki is Anki available on the iPad and I in the end I found out you can't fully utilize Anki without a laptop or a PC or a Mac so and I have an iPad <laughs> so so there's that you can use it on your phone you can use it on your phone but making the decks are a lot easier it's a lot user friendly on like a PC or laptop. Hmm. You you can definitely make cards, make decks on the phone, but I found it to be hard. Mm -hmm. It took me like an hour to figure it out. And I was like, oh, I'm just going to use Quizlet. Yeah, I feel like Quizlet was a big one. Okay. So I'm getting distracted because I'm trying to upgrade Zoom so it doesn't kick us out in 10 seconds. Oh, that's fine. And it's like, it's probably just going to kick us out. That's okay. Yeah, let, let's just let's just start the new call now then. Yeah, let's just do that because this is actually a good thing to talk about. This could be a different video for, for you too, if you want, if, or like a like a short or something. We'll see. Yeah, see where it goes. Okay, it said less than a minute for like two minutes. Maybe it's just gaslighting me. 
I say let's play it safe and just yeah yeah do the next call. All right. I get it. <laughs> All right, we're back from our little intermission. Elijah had something very important to say. What is up, guy? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Trying to be like a super high energy YouTuber. <laughs> They always have that kind of inflection too. They're like, what is up, guys? It's your boy. <laughs> so, that's so not my personality, but it could be yours. No, I'm not gonna do that. Okay. I have to be professional now. I'm a professional now. I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't know. The, the YouTube thing is interesting because, like, so many people get so much benefit out of just either us just talking about just literally how PA school is. Mm -hmm. Because, like, a lot of people get, like, this advice and, like, how it's going to be from their friends, their classmates. But some people are just kind of, like, lone wolfing it and just doing it on their own. Yeah. You know, and they don't have anyone to give them advice or tell them how things are going to be. And then they find out on their own, like, a semester in and they're like, well, shit, I wish I knew this, like, months ago. So I feel like YouTube kind of fills that void for a lot of people that don't know a lot of people. Mm -hmm. You know? And then even if it's, like, it's not, like, information, it's kind of, like, camaraderie. Right. Like we're all going through the same struggle right now. Yeah. Like we've either been through it or we're going to be through it or we're going through it now. And it's like just like putting something that like that on in your car as you like drive to class or whatever. It's like you're not alone going through it. Oh, trust me. I play your videos like all the time while I'm doing dishes, while I'm driving to work. Must have fallen asleep. My shit's boring. No, it was great, man. It kept me up. There's like a couple of your videos that I kept watching over and over. Which one? Um, I think you talked about like why why pre med versus PA because wait yeah the one that I deleted or oh, the new one that I, well so I, I made one of those like maybe a month or two ago but I had an old one from years ago I I watched all of it then I probably watched the more recent one okay yeah like I remember back in Arizona I was I was watching that one in my car yeah yeah I'm about to make another new one actually about that because that one mm -hmm. actually got big that's my biggest video right now. Over the last couple months, because I feel like that's a huge choice people have to make because like <laughs> either one is going to spend like years of your life trying to get there. Right. So it's like, which path am I choosing? Do I want to go all in on MD? Do I want to do PA? You know, mm -hmm. so that's so are you kind of just like revamping, revamping that. that no. topic. So uh, full disclosure. So the first one, um, the first one I made was like years ago. Mm -hmm. and it was when I was still married. And like. I basically told like the audience, like I chose PA because I want more to my life than just medicine. I want like a family. I want this and that. Uh, uh -huh. And then I showed like a big uh, photo for my wedding. Mm -hmm. And so as soon as I got divorced, I was like, I'm taking this video down. Like we're definitely not going <laughs> to talk about this. Let's just, let's make a new one. Uh, so that that's full disclosure. Why that video is no mm -hmm. longer there in case I'm uh, okay. looking for it. Uh, the memories. <laughs> okay. The memories. <laughs> not really. It's just like, I, don't know. I just don't think it's appropriate to show it now right. um but the new one i'm just sitting there like by my car in my backyard like all right this is why mm -hmm. whatever you know sipping a cup of coffee and just talking <laughs> kind of kind of it's like why do we do this it's like one to like deliver information absolutely but also it's just like to keep people going right you know yeah but like just the transparency that we're bringing to the audience here you know absolutely for the for those few that watch you know like uh, that are going through it like the people that watch your channel are people who really like are looking for information out there right mm -hmm. something to kind of segue their their journey into being a pre-pa and I, I think we're kind of unveiling like the oasis here you know and just showing them like oh this is what it's like you know unveiling the oasis yeah here it is the like what do you call it like the harp whatever <laughs> whatever I, I can't remember um what that sound effect is like but yeah it's just i think it's a good thing to do it helps people out mm -hmm. you know like when i was a pre-pa driving my like rusty old car to post back like not even sure if it's going to make it or not like just hoping to get into school one day uh -huh. like i would put on like adana the pa and like john baliski and like just mm -hmm. listen to them like not for any answers but just like okay they've been through it they got there you know maybe mm -hmm. too you know you watch adana too she's, yeah. she's one of the ones i watched a lot I did like in her earlier stuff back when she was still kind of like giving a lot of information. I'm not really sure what she does anymore. She's still doing the same thing now. She used to be a trauma PA at, uh, when she was a new grad yeah. a couple of years ago. And now she does OB, I think. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's weird. I'm I'm already like a PA student, but I still watch a lot of like pre-PA videos and podcasts and stuff. 
but you're kind of in the community. Yeah, yeah. I, I and there's a lot of people like that ask me like on the flight. There's a lot of people that ask me like stuff on the forums. Uh huh. Um, will ask me questions, and I don't want to give them like any outdated information. So I just kind of keep keep up, you know, while I'm walking to class. Just Yeah. read time. Yeah. I mean, you're like, it's been a big like part of your life, like in this community trying to get in. Mm -hmm. well, just hand it to you. It's a big part of your life. And now you're like on the other side of it, helping other people, you know? Mm -hmm. So I think it's a good thing. We just I mean, you did that for me and I'm just, I'm following your shoes. So Yeah, absolutely. I'm passing the buck to Elijah. I don't know. I'll probably keep doing this. I would imagine. Uh, but I don't know. It's kind of nice to do it with somebody else and like pass ideas back and forth instead of just Mm -hmm. be more like a conversation versus like a like a script or anything. Yeah. The problem with that is I don't think we've talked about anything substantive for like the last 40 minutes. I think you're <laughs> we're just So anyway, cut shooting the shit. Okay, I don't cut. know. I mean, like, let's make it more of a podcast, I guess, sometimes. And then, like, I'll clip smaller videos out of the big ones. But Okay. I don't know. Sorry, I think I'm making people... your well, I'm making your job a lot harder here. My job? <laughs> Oh, no, I don't think so. yeah, because you're the one editing it. I, I, I'm just talking, and then I'm gonna go Literally. straight. I mean, I don't know. It's going to get outsourced eventually if we ever make any any income from this thing. Full disclosure, like there, this video is not monetized. None of this is monetized yet. Like none of us are making money off this. Uh, the only way me and Elijah make any money out of this venture is if you guys pay us to edit your essays or buy my book. Yes, by the book. Buy my book. As Yeah. much as we can talk about it, like Boris has a lot of stuff in there, and I've taken a good look at it too. Yeah, it's good stuff. It's uh, it's going to help you get in. But this is not an advertisement. So anyway, <laughs> uh, oh, so before Zoom kicked us off, because mm hmm we uh, we crossed the magical 40-minute threshold, mm uh, hmm. before Zoom kicked us off, we were starting to talk about like different study methods. Yeah. And so like a lot of people use Anki, some people use Quizlet, you know, Right. some people just read the chapter like a crazy person. Mm -hmm. I don't know. What are you going to do? So I, I think I've opted for like Google Docs, Quizlet, and Notability. Those are the three. That's my like, th those are going to be my golden three because that's what, that's what works for me. Now, if you already use Anki and you know how to use it, that thing's amazing. There's spatial recognition and memorization. It, it, it's, it's amazing. Like use it if you know how to do it. Yeah. But it, if you haven't delved into it and you're about to start, Mm -hmm. probably stick to what's comfortable with like for you. Like if Quizlet's uh, good for you, then just use Quizlet. You know, because Yep. you're at the end of the day, you're all learning the same information, just in a different style, right? You don't want to study the same way as someone else studies because it may not work for you, Sure. right? There's so many of my classmates that write down every single thing, but that's just not the way I learn. I'm very visual. I like to... actively recall in my head that's the way i learned so I don't think those guys are going to be able to keep up. oh yeah it, 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 we're already getting flooded right now Yeah, that's what I used to do in like post back and everything. I would literally write everything out and then I would condense it and write it again and then make it shorter and write it again. uh-huh Like in PA school, you just don't have time. There's no way you can get through that much information. And then if that's how you're trying to study, you're going to stress yourself out be like, well, I can't keep up. Well, you can, but just change your methods. You know, that just doesn't work no more. Um, Also, I think you were saying something about how you were like learning how to use notability while you were in class. While I was in class, I was like, oh, how do I erase things? Uh huh. You know, like Me too. little technical issue. Yeah. 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 Well, it, and it's nice. So here's my Apple pen. So Wow, I had an bougie. Apple pen. Oh, yeah, yeah. I got my name engraved on it. Just like, oh, where's my camera up over there? <laughs> Oh, like, so cool. just in case I drop it, man. You never know. Yeah. But so, yeah, like I was like, what the heck? Like, how, how do I erase something? And there's a feature on the Apple pen where you just like double tap and it, it'll go to that erase feature or you can like just click it on there. But That took me like three minutes, right? And the professor is talking fast. There's, we're getting a whole lot of knowledge in even just the span of like five, 10 minutes. So you got to really like, when you're in class, you, you really have to just pay attention because you can't be dozing off. You can't be daydreaming. Like you have to be actively studying in your head as they're lecturing, just really like trying to ingrain it into your head because you're going to want to go back on those slides later on and be like, okay, what do I rem What do I remember? What do I not remember? Right. So ideally, like the optimal way to do it is to read the slides ahead of time. You can do that. Yeah, they they do have it. So I think most pro programs should have your slides up So before that's like class. the best way to do it is like what they call it, like the three prong method or something or the three repeat method or something where like.
the first time you go through it is like you don't know anything you're just kind of skimming through and like okay i know this i don't know this maybe i'll maybe i'll circle or highlight things that i don't really know and I, that's what i really want to pay attention mm -hmm. um, before class so like you just skim through all the notes five ten minutes just skim in mm -hmm. class then you've already seen it so that's the second time and that's when you like take detailed notes on like something that you really don't know right excuse me and then right after class the best time to review everything so if you can get it three times that day you won't really need to study and cram much so that's the optimal way nobody does it that way because it takes a lot of discipline or i'm and sure some people do but i didn't and time yeah but so most people they leave it towards kind of the end and they, they like cram and they try to like take notes later but like that's the best way to do it skim the notes pay attention in class and then review right after class even if you're tired and then you just kind of have it, mm -hmm. you know, ideally. I didn't do that because I wasn't disciplined. Yeah, so for PA student, pre-PA students and students who recently got accepted, mm -hmm. just know know how you study. Try it out. See if it works. You know, some stuff will work. Some stuff is still working for me as of right now. I'm on day two, so I don't know yet. <laughs> but but I'm, I feel you know my experience. I, yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I feel comfortable with it. Um, I'll let you guys know. How my first exam goes but mm -hmm. so far i'm retaining material and remembering things from my past classes from my period classes and it, it's been working for me so stick to what you know and then adjust adjust throughout the semester you have to be adaptable that's what being a pa is hey that was good <laughs> <Very cool>. ciao <laughs> zing the fonzie um, i just remember i had this one classmate edgar who sat behind me and he was all into Anki. He was like yeah. kind of a younger guy and he's all into tech and he was trying to teach me Anki and he was all excited about it. And I like, my brain was like spinning. I was like, I'm focusing more on how to use this technology than the actual material. And that's mm -hmm. when I feel like I, I'm not doing Anki, but like he got a, a ton of benefit from it. Cause there's a lot of slide decks already made, mm -hmm. you know? So I don't know, find what works for you. And if it just feels wrong, just don't push yourself. Don't do it. Just do something else. Mm -hmm. And I was telling Boris earlier, I don't know if this is in the recording, but last night I was up studying until I think close to 3 a.m. And that's because it took me like hours to figure out how to how to use Anki. And in the end, just not end up using it. Right. I could have used those hours to study for anatomy, but yeah. I got caught up in how to study and how to utilize these softwares. Right. So mm -hmm. that's why it's important for you guys to really figure out before PA school. Like if you have like six months until your program starts or even if you have a month left just figure out figure it out right now so then you're not struggling during that first week i have the opposite advice oh <laughs> i actually have a video from years ago that says like what should you do and study before pa school starts and uh -huh. I said nothing like well, because that you, too yeah i feel like you kind of have to be doing it to figure out what works for you Mm -hmm. So if you're going to speculate and try to pre-study or whatever, you're just going to stress yourself out and you're going to be so stressed in school. I would rather you just like spend that time chilling. Right. Like just be stressing yeah. before because you're yeah. going to sell your soul. Exactly. Uh -huh. exactly. Just like spend time with family, eat, drink, have fun, sleep, mm -hmm. get some exercise. Just like be in the best state of mind when you start school and then just know that you'll figure it out because you're smart and you're capable mm -hmm. and they chose you for a reason. So you will figure it out. So I would rather you like not even freak out about it before school starts. And then once school starts, then you freak out about it. Mm -hmm. And then you don't stop freaking out for two or three years. And then, yeah. I did actually take that advice. I yeah. think before uh -huh. school started, I did nothing. I was right. spending time with my son. I was playing yep. video games. I was watching TV, watching my shows. Yep. Um, but I think too much to the point where it's like, I think I should have started at least a week before. I think that would be okay. That's what I should have done. Maybe a week just to figure out my tech, like my apps. That's true. That's true. Yeah. Okay. Not necessarily study anything substantial. Mm -hmm. um, you know, even though I had a, an exam my first day of class, like don't study anything substantial. Yeah. Like don't study anatomy like three months before your class starts. Like no point. They're, they're going to teach you. They're going to teach you it in class, mm -hmm. you know, so study it when you actually need the material, because by the time if you if you're studying it like three, six months until your program starts, you're going to forget by the time your program starts. You're going to forget and you're going to spend all that time studying something that may not be on the test. Exactly. So like there's a lot of anatomy in there. They're not going to test you on the entire book. They're going to pick and choose what they want. And mm -hmm. if you end up studying a bunch of stuff that's not on there, you're going to be like, well, shoot, you know.
Right. Uh, like I would just rather you chill, have fun, like Elijah said, and then just like hit it as soon as you get to school and you'll do fine. And also buy the book. And, <laughs> yeah, I think you'll be fine. Buy that book or buy your textbooks. <laughs> I didn't buy any textbooks. Yeah. I'll be honest. I, I didn't either. And you, pro you probably want to cut that there. I don't know if my program wants to hear that. <laughs> they're not going to give a crap as long as you pass. That's I just, true. I mean, yeah, I, I, I talked to the director today. Um, and she, Oh God, I was like waking up still. She, I walked out of the elevator <laughs> and she was like, congrats. And I was like, oh, congrats. what? Yeah, like like at, at like, what, 8.30 a.m.? And wow. I was like, oh, what? And she was like, your score in the midterm. Like, you did really well. I was like, oh, oh, thank you. And I was like, yeah. And she was like, oh, what did you do? Did you use the book? And I was like, to be honest, I use it only on terms I didn't know. My classmates read the book and I studied off their flashcards. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that brings up a good point. Uh, yes. One, yes, be awake and caffeinated when you're talking to the director because <laughs> impressions are important and they they hold all the cards. They pull a lot of strings. Oh, yeah. So like, I know it's not supposed to be this way, but if the staff and the faculty like you, then like things are just better, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so there's that. I'm not going to say much more about that. Um, the other thing is groups. Studying in groups is phenomenal because it's like, like at the end of the day, you're the one that has to get it into your brain and learn it. But like the hard work, such as like making a Quizlet out of chapter one, maybe mm -hmm. Elijah makes a Quizlet out of chapter one and I make one out of out of chapter two. And then I don't know, Sophie makes a Quizlet out of chapter three. Well, now I don't have to read two chapters. Now I only have to read one chapter and I can mm -hmm. just like use Quizlet that other people made for me. Right. We did that. We had Mason. He was like the king of Quizlet. And like <laughs> before class is even over, and you're like, shit, how am I going to study this? Mason's like, I already made a Quizlet. And we're like, damn, Mason, how'd you do that? But it was just like, everybody's good at something. Someone's going to be the Quizlet person. Someone's going to be the Anki person. Someone's going to be just like the recognizing when everyone's stressed out and they like buy nachos person. Like everybody's got a role. So right. find your find your team, find your tribe. Yeah, like really utilize your classmates. You're, there's so many resources you can use for PA school, but your classmates, your cohort... They're the biggest resource that you could use. And there's a reason why you were picked, why they were picked. Mm -hmm. You know, everyone's collaborative. That it's a collab, it's a collaborative field that you're going into. It is. You're gonna want to work with them. You know, you gotta start uh, start learning how to work with people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, hundred percent. It's so helpful. And even if it's not like necessarily like doing like the hard work, like they'll keep you accountable, or they'll just motivate you. Like for instance, we had a group. Mm -hmm. I was in a group where we just like every Sunday we got together, we made dinner bullshitted and then after dinner we would study exactly mm -hmm. and two of the kids in that group were like way too smart one of them <laughs> yeah byron was like he just i don't think he even studied he just knew everything and then the other two guys were like really hard working and then there was me and then like occasionally like one of the girls would join and like just even being around them being like holy crap they like they already know everything and i haven't even started or i'm like halfway through like just pushes you right. better you know right so yeah, be, be around other people if possible. It's really hard to lone wolf the whole thing. Yeah, like knowing where you stand with a group, it's gonna want you to strive to be up here, right? And then Absolutely. they're gonna they're gonna feel that, then they're gonna want to go up, 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 up. You know, it yeah. it sounds competitive, but at the same time, it's also collaborative, right? It is. It's like when it's something that hard, you have to see other people doing it, and you have to see yourself kind of falling behind to like mm -hmm. want to run and catch up. And then, like sometimes, this is. A little bit more shitty i guess but it's true if you feel like you're falling behind or you didn't do as well as you wanted there's always someone who is struggling more right you know like you would bring people into your group and they're like dude i failed the last two tests and you're like shit i'm feeling bad about like barely passing the last two tests exactly and so then you feel a little bit better about yourself and then you help them and then like there's no better way to learn than to teach so then mm -hmm. you end up both like getting better so just don't try to do this by yourself is what mm -hmm. i'm saying I, I definitely am throughout the years I've been the type to study alone, right? Yeah, I think likewise. Yeah. My only study partner is my wife. And now we're not classmates anymore. Um <laughs> right. we were classmates in our undergrad and our masters, but now we're no longer classmates. Um okay. so I'm I have been kind of lone wolfing it, but I'm slowly starting to integrate myself into study groups. I think it's because of my personality as as a studier. Like I like to go at my pace and you know do all the rote memorization alone um 
and then later on i like to you know then collaborate with other people and say like hey like you know can can we talk about this can we talk about this for me that works best yeah now if if you're coming right out of a lecture and like going over like a specific topic that may not work for you like to just go into a group right away right because no one really knows anything right yeah. right like you're you're gonna go off into a conference room or a study room and you're all gonna kind of be lost together right and mm-hmm. you're not gonna really focus in or pinpoint on what you should be studying so from i i don't know what may work for you guys but for me i want to study alone first at least the first day and then maybe collaborate with someone later i feel kind of the same way like i kind mm-hmm. of want to be ready for the study group because otherwise i feel like i don't get anything out of it right um, sometimes that's not true like you get there and someone's already done a lot or they have experience so they like know a lot so you just kind of get like a head start um mm-hmm. The other thing is sometimes in a study group, people end up like bullshitting and just like chatting and yep. not studying. And then that's like counterproductive. Right. So just be careful. Everyone has their different style. You, you got to find your style. You got to find your group of people. And you you got you got to, like I said earlier, just adapt. Yeah. Yeah. Find the people that you work best with. And like sometimes you'll just like you'll feel like studying with one group and then you'll be in a different mood like the next week and you'll like want to do a different group. It's just Mm-hmm. just like be open to that i guess i don't know mm-hmm. find your people find yeah. your people and just like be ready to just like jump around and just yeah try to try to have multiple people even for pre-pas if you're doing prereqs find your people you know there's people in community colleges and like universities that are that have like similar aspirations so just yeah find, find your people no matter where you are literally i just remember in my post back um mm-hmm. we were sitting at the dairy bar i was part of this like group of three it was me jackie and security uh jackie's finishing up med school now she's going to be an er doc so currently oh, wow. last minute decided that she doesn't want medicine anymore she went to law school and i think she already graduated uh but so it was me jackie and security and then like everybody else and so like we were studying one night late at night at the dairy bar for endocrinology mm-hmm. and like i just realized that the amount that we were talking about science like went less and less and the amount they were talking about Kim Kardashian was going more and more. <laughs> and like, it was starting to annoy me like one out of 10. And then it started mm-hmm. annoying me like three out of 10. Mm-hmm. And then finally, I just kind of like held it in until I couldn't focus anymore. And was like, guys, I'm freaking done with Kim Kardashian. Let's freaking study some endocrinology. And, like, <laughs> you know how girls gang up on you? Uh-huh. They like both like dropped what they were doing. And they were like, Boris, you go sit over there. And I was like, I will. And so I went and went like, sat by myself like a few tables over and just like studied endocrinology <laughs> and then like an hour later we all reconvened and i was like so how'd you guys do they were like well actually as soon as you left we started going back to science and i was like come on there you go the book. come on <laughs> <laughs> i was so over it but like i don't know we kind of remained friends afterwards for a little while like it, it was all good you weren't voted off the island. Yeah, I was sort of voted off the island, but I also kind of like swam away from the island myself because I was like, I'm, I'm not <laughs> like getting any benefit out of talking about Kim Kardashian right now. <laughs> I don't get it. And then like as soon as I leave, they start talking about school again. But you know what? That, that's those are the memories that stick with you, right? The ones... I'll never forget it. Yep. It, and th- this is something that I'm going to try to take with me throughout my program. So my my faculty mentioned like multiple of, of them mentioned. Mm-hmm. The greatest memories that you'll make during PA school aren't the aren't all nighters studying. You're not gonna remember that. Oh, that one night. Ooh, I spent. You know, I pulled an all nighter. Ooh. Um, the memories that you're gonna make are those your classmates, the connections that you make with faculty, just like stopping by their office, talking to them. Yeah. Or going to a concert with your friends, or going on a picnic with your classmates. You know, those are the things that you'll remember. Not necessarily how hard this test was, or how exactly I studied for this test. Oh, like I, I remember like all these years ago, this is how I studied and that was so memorable to me. No, you're going to, you're going to remember those fun moments. And that's something that I want to keep with me throughout PA school that I'm already trying to start now. Mm-hmm. Um, just making memories with my family. Um, and that's the advice that I want to give to PA students about to start. Like mm-hmm. you're going to have all the time in the world to study, you know, but make time for yourself. Yeah. Make time for yourself. And I would also say, especially to a guy like Elijah, who happens to like have a wife at home who moved with him and a kid, it's going to be really easy to like isolate yourself from your class and just like deal with your family. Mm -hmm. Um, And then you kind of lose 
one, those connections and those memories yeah. to those study resources. And three, I would say even more importantly, just like being in the know about things going on in the program. Right. You know, cause like some things aren't necessarily like emailed out or spelled out for you. It's just like, Oh, you haven't heard. So, right. and I feel like I kind of fell into that. Cause I like, I was married. I had a wife um, at home at that time. And well, she wasn't at home. She was doing a PhD program, but like she was, you know, if I was trying to spend spare time with someone, it was usually with her. Mm -hmm. So like I made an effort, especially early on to try to be friends with people in the program. And I feel like that like really fell off uh, after, you know, a semester or two. And so like kind of towards second year, I started noticing that like just I didn't know things and I wanted to and I didn't really know who to ask. Like, right. oh, we're meeting where for this or wait, I didn't even hear that we had to be at this thing or whatever. Like, I don't remember specifically. Or like, I didn't realize that the exam was moved because I didn't read one of my 10,000 emails today, but like everybody who talked to people already knew. So it's right. just like, it's very important to prioritize being around your classmates, mm -hmm. even if it's not just studying, just like socially listening to whatever bullshit's going on in their lives, just like mm -hmm. just being around them because they, they help in a lot of different ways that you wouldn't even realize. Like I, I kind of noticed that in myself today as well. I, mm -hmm. At work, I used to be the type to, I want to, work is work, lunch is lunch. I would veer off and take my lunch yeah. somewhere. Yeah. And I try, and I almost did that today, but I said, you know what? I'm going to eat lunch with my classmates. You know, we all kind of microwave their food together. I'm not going to walk away. And everyone's kind of like gathering, mm -hmm. you know, at least a close group of guys that I'm talking to and I'm, you know, having fun with. So yeah, I stayed with them. And you know what? Like we talked about the funniest things like Operation Paperclip, like conspiracy theories, <laughs> world war the possible world war three you know like wait what conspiracy the theory well um operation wait, paperclip which one have you heard operation paperclip no no yeah it's the one where um they talk about how they believe there's no not that they believe it's a fact um so there's a lot of uh not um nazi germans at least their descendants that are in yeah. south there's america Guatemala or something uh, yeah south america like what do i yeah you know, what about and one of my classmates actually has a beach house there and he confirmed he was like oh yeah there's like germans up there <laughs> and i was like what <laughs> really not just any germans Let's yeah oh it. yeah well they're descendants descendants yeah. so i don't know if they carry the same values but oh geez yeah so there's that <laughs> okay let me look on a map and check off one place i'm never gonna go <laughs> you know being jewish and everything should probably stay out of <laughs> south america but yeah, so just yeah, back man. to the point I was making, just that's the memory that I'll I'll remember, you know, even just like a simple like dinner table, lunch table conversation like that. Mm -hmm. You know, so, so like Boris said earlier, and I just want to reiterate, make time for yourself, but also make time for your classmates. Yeah, hundred percent. And also like talk to your partner about how important that is. Yes. She's never gonna see you. She's gonna be like, You're either studying and like now you have free time and you're spending it with like joe and whoever like what the heck you'd be like you don't get it like it's really important to be part of this community you know? but i'm very transparent with her i'll tell her like hey there's this asian guy i met in my class <laughs> and he's like cool yeah <laughs> or like hey there's this guy that's from california i've been talking to him nice yeah like I, I would update her like i'm very transparent like we share everything about our days and i think that helps her a lot too for sure yeah i don't think that you would ever hide anything it's just like physically the amount of time you're spending just with her versus mm -hmm. with other people uh, just that she needs to understand that it's very important. Yeah. And you know, what helps. She's also like really busy. So she's taking care of her son. She's applying for jobs. She's applying to med school. She's still fixing up everything in the apartment and it's looking beautiful right now. So uh, thank you for, thank you Gaia for that. Um, Gaia. Gaia. Yeah. Yeah. Like Gaia. Gaia. Thank you Gaia. Yeah. So yeah, like she's she's busy as well. So her day is kind of just going by, you know. So it, that helps her too. Yeah, hundred percent. I can't remember exactly, but I think so. We had a class of seventy five, and out of the few people that were in relationships when they started, I think like half broke up and then half got married. That's scary. <laughs> It's like, yeah, it's either going to like bring you closer and it's just like we got through this thing together or it's going to be like, OK, this isn't working because mm -hmm. uh, it's just it's like any other like. I wouldn't say trauma, but difficult thing that you go through, it's just like it's either going to bring you closer or it's not right because PA school takes a lot out of you so much time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
But anyway, so we talked about orientation briefly. Yes. We talked briefly. about how to study. We talked about the importance of your classmates. Anything else you would really include in this one that you could think um, of? Just take take it as you go. Mm -hmm. You know, if if you if you got your interview, yeah, do the research on it, but also like, you know, take time for yourself. If you got into PA school, great. You know, take it one day at a time. No matter where what you're doing, just take it one day at a time. I'm in PA school right now. I'm taking it one day at a time, right? Because I'm not going to stress about the exam that's like three months ahead, mm -hmm. right? Or the exam that's next week. I'm going to do what I can now. Make sure I can sleep knowing I did the best I could today, studying wise, spending time with my family, you know, doing the things that are important to me, my priorities in life. And if I can get all that done before I go to sleep, then I'm happy. And if not, then you don't go to sleep. If I'm not, then I don't go to sleep until I, just like last night, 3 a.m., baby. <laughs> it's also like midnight in California, so you're still on that time schedule. Y yeah, I'm kind of jet-lagged still, just yeah. slightly. A little bit. Going east is harder than going west. Yeah, but we're going to adapt. Yeah, it'll be fine. All right, y'all. So that was a good one. I think we talked about some important stuff. So me and Elijah will try to do these, I'd say, weekly. It would be good. Mm hmm you know, just literally get together, talk about whatever. If you guys have questions, you know, definitely post them in the comments. Email me, email Elijah, uh, you know, go to my website. You have contact for both of us there. Anybody needs help getting into PA school, we're there for it. Anybody needs help writing their essay and getting into PA school, buy the book, buy the book. I think we're out. And we're out. Thanks, and guys. Out. All right, y'all. Have yeah. a good one. See you next week. Bye. I'm going to just stop recording here.